JSON is the standard in communication between APIs, web applications and mobile apps. In this video we are going to go through all the different parts of JSON and in the end of the video we are going to try using a website API with a website. To start I've found an API we can play with here on api.chaknorris.io and they state that they have hand curated Chuck Norris facts. Sounds awesome, right? If we scroll down a bit, we can see what the API URL is, and we can even get an example response that shows us what we will get if we would call the API. Let's see if we can break down the JSON we see here. This is a JSON response, which follows the typical JavaScript object. JSON actually stands for JavaScript Object Notation. We will either get an object like this, in our JSON, or we could get an array, which is basically a list, and it could contain whatever we like. It could be text, numbers, more objects, or any of the other things we will talk about in just a minute. But first, let's go through the structure just a little bit more. We have something we call a key value pair. So imagine you have a dictionary and you want to look up duck. You would open the book go to the letter D and then start looking for the word. Once you find it, you will see duck to the left and then a description of the word to the right. You can say that the entire description is the value and the word duck is the key. In that way, objects and dictionaries are very similar. The first key value pair we have here is the key icon underline URL with the value of a URL that points to an icon. Key value pairs are always separated with a column and ends with a comma, except for the last key value pair. This is how you will see all JSON objects formatted, first with a left brace, followed by key value pairs, and then in the end of the object a right brace. This JSON object we see here is a really simple one. Once you start nesting objects and arrays in here, it will start to get complicated quickly. But now we have only looked at the values that are text strings and learned about objects and arrays. There are a few more types of values we can use and they are numbers. This can be any numeral without quotes around them. They can be integers like 42 or decimals like 3.14. Booleans are simple true or false values and are written as true or false without quotes. Null represents a null value, which is basically used to denote nothing or a lack of value. It's written as null without quotes. All right, now that we have learned all the technical parts, let's see if we can use this API with the JSON response in a real web application. This llama came to me in my dreams and told me he wanted to tell Chuck Norris jokes but he didn't know any, so I thought that you and I could help him out. We can use the API from earlier, which gives us Chuck Norris jokes in a JSON response. So let's see if we can plug it into our website. I gave our llama buddy a home in the middle here, put a small title under him, right above a box where I'm thinking that we are going to put the Chuck Norris jokes. I am guessing that our llama wants to tell as many jokes as he possibly can, so I gave him a button where we can ask him for more jokes. First, let's hop over to our code editor and create a JavaScript file where we can put all our JavaScript. Add a script tag to our HTML to make sure it is loaded. Let's add a function in here, which we can call when we click the button to load another joke. What we can do to just check so that we have all the connections between the button and the function in place is to have a console log with anything in it. I'm going to put the word click in there. Connect the function to the onClick property on the button, open your browser inspector and check the console. Click the button and it works. Let's grab the API link from the Chuck Norris website and call the API using the built-in function fetch. The fetch call will return a response object, which in most cases, if JSON is returned, will be extractable by calling the JSON function on the response. On the website, we can see that the joke will be on the value key, but let's use console log on the JSON function just to be sure. Looks like it is on the value key as they said. All right, now we just have to plug it in on the div tag and there we go. You just learned how to use JSON. Hope you had fun and if you stayed this long, you're awesome. Slap the thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. Catch you in the next one.